Hello and welcome to the show. I'm glad you've joined us this week. I have the best guest ever. Dee Dee is gonna come out here and help me today. And we hear from lots of our viewers constantly that they like to see the family involvement and they wanna see more of my family on the show. And I decided to make this really great, to bring you in really close and personal so you are gonna to get to actually view a family argument on film right here today. We, we are discussing, are you capable of riding a young horse? That's coming up right here on Discovering the Horseman Within. Now the sun is rising slowly On the mountain you must climb And the trail that takes you closer to the source And you dream about the moment When you leave it all behind and Climb up on that one true horse That one true horse The perfect partner built to ride One true Bond that cannot be denied You would search forever Just to have the chance To take a ride on one true horse I'm Gonna take a ride on one true horse So here's the argument, and it's not just Dee Dee and I that have this argument. Lots of people talk to me and tell me, they say, Ken, there are some people who just shouldn't ride young horses. And I might agree with that if we were talking about riding Bronx out in the middle of Nevada somewhere. But the, my purpose and my goal is to be able to show everybody how to ride young horses. Well, Dee Dee is one of those people who says there's just some people that shouldn't ride young horses and... I'm one of them, is what she says, right? That's correct. I feel that inexperienced people should not ride inexperienced horses. Now, I agree with that. I agree 100% with that statement. Green on green makes black and blue. But you are by no means an inexperienced person. So, but she has not ridden very many young or green horses. So what we're going to do is talk about how do you ride this young horse if you're not a trainer. You have a young horse, you want to ride it. What are some things to do to build your confidence and to increase your confidence in yourself so that the horse can have confidence as well? Because I think that's key. I think if, if you don't have confidence, that's your main problem. That's my main problem. I have no confidence in riding a green horse at all. You have any problem sure. riding a broke horse? No problems. None. In fact, Dee Dee's nickname, I mean, I'm, we're just airing the family laundry here. Dee Dee's nickname <laughs> is Firewall, because that's how she rides. She rides with it to the firewall. She likes that stuff. She competed in the Craig Cameron Extreme Cowboy Race. She likes that stuff. So you have this very talented, very capable rider who just doesn't really think they have the confidence to lend to this young horse. And that's really what we're talking about. What do you need to be able to lend to this young horse? All right, so let's talk about the horse for just a second. Go ahead and put your reins over her neck and just love on her for a minute. This is Ebony. She is a two-year-old, soon to be three-year-old filly. She's the first filly, uh, the first foal actually, uh, by my stud horse Stormy, we raised this filly. She was raised as most of our young horses are raised and that is on the range. She was halter broke as a weanling, turned loose, brought in, halted a little bit and fooled with as a yearling, a little more, and then started this spring as a two-year-old. She had 15 rides put on her in our three-week program, about 15 rides. And then she was turned out for the summer, brought in three days ago. And uh, one of the girls that trains for me rode her yesterday. And honestly, this television show idea came up last night and I said, hey, let's use Ebony, she'll work perfect. So that's where we're at. All right, Dee, what I want you to do, to start with, you and her need to have some sort of a relationship. Now the groundwork has all been done. You don't need to necessarily round pen her to death, but you need to work together a little bit. So what I want you to start by doing is just come over here to the right hand side, pick up on the rein, stand on the ground, take your, take your, left, your, your left hand and reach up and grab a hold of the saddle horn, which is quite a reach for you because you're kind of vertically challenged. Reach up here, <laughs> get a hold of this saddle, saddle horn so that you are with her wherever she goes. If she starts to move, you're with her. Then you take this rein, you bring it back here and you get it snug just to her mouth. Don't turn her head. 
just get it right here to her mouth and wait for her to get soft and tuck her nose down. And as soon as she does, release her. When she gives the bit, tucks her nose down, release her. Don't second guess yourself. You know what you're looking for. Don't release her till you get it. Now, every now and then, she's sort of flinching. So you want to just, the, the worst thing you can ever do around a colt is sneak. You don't want to sneak and get real soft around a horse. You just want to move and be real natural around a young horse. Right. Okay? Okay. So after you've got her to give a couple of times, then you want to work on disengaging her hindquarters. Okay. Just hold on that pressure right there, wait. And right here is where a lot of people start going, oh, wait a minute. Well, she bent her head, was that enough? No, it's not enough. She needs to soften and quit pulling on the rein. It's never enough to get kind of what you want. You want to start out, set your expectations, set your goals, and achieve them. Okay, wait on her to get soft. You notice we're using a full cheek snaffle bit. Man, on an unbroke horse, I just think they're the best bit in the world. Uh, once I get a horse, maybe 10 rides, go ahead and come to this side, work on this side. Then I switch to an offset D-ring. But at this stage, watch this time as Dee, Dee picks up on this left rein. I want you to watch right here what happens to the bit as that outside cheek piece kind of comes in and folds into her cheek and just helps pull her nose around and just kind of leads her around there a little bit. Wait for it to come to vertical. Good. Now, Dee Dee's hands are great. She's not moving her hands around. She's not pulling the horse around. She sets that rein and then lets this little mare come to her. I think that when you get on an unbroke horse, or this horse isn't unbroke, but a green horse, a young horse, say you sent your horse out for training for 30 days. My recommendation is you send him out for 90 days at least. But let's say you set him out for 30 days, you got him home, and you, you want to ride him, then what am I going to do? Well, this is where you're going to start. You're just going to come back here and, and just sort of build a relationship between the two of you where the horse knows that everything is exactly the same as it's been. Okay, Dee Dee, you've done that great. She's getting nice and soft. Now what I want you to do, pick this rein up again, but now change your focus back here to her hindquarters, and you can kind of kiss to her, but don't pull, keep her nose soft, and hold her, hold her head broken over here until she moves her hindquarters away from you. Okay. So you're teaching her to move her hindquarters away from the bed. Okay. I don't ever like to see somebody grab the horse's nose and pull it around. There you go, stay Just with her. Just her a little bit. Good. I don't like to see him grab that nose and pull it around. I want to see that horse come around nice and soft, okay? Now, as soon as she gives and moves her hindquarters around like you want them to, I want you to go ahead and just kind of slap on the saddle and pop things around. She's just acting a little jittery, more so than she should. So we're going to pick up on that and work on that. Don't, again, don't second guess yourself. You bought this horse or you just got him back from the trainer. If this horse is telling you, gee, I'm a little nervous, I don't care how good he's supposed to be. Horses have bad days. I just talked to a lady yesterday. Her daughter is a trainer. She said, Ken, she worked this horse all summer. He was fantastic. He was the greatest horse ever. She took him back to the owner, and I wouldn't do that. You're not giving a cue with your hand. So I just you stand just, here and you just wait, wait for right her to here. step around. And now see how she's leaning on the bed? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to get her soft, and then I'm going to release it. And I'm No, 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 you can't go forward. Release it. No, can't go forward. Release it. But then I'm going to bring it right back here until finally... She gets tired of having her nose over here, and she wants to straighten her neck out. So when I get her nose stuck over here, but I'm not holding it. When you hold it, she just lays her head down on that bit like a pillow. Right. Okay. Change my focus right there. So that's and the only ask thing you can move. do is just That's kiss the only to her. thing, because if you set, spend a lot of time building this cue right here. Right. Okay. When you get on her and she jumps, are you going to have the presence of mind to add that cue? Right. No, but you are going to have the presence of mind to grab one rein and pull. Sure. So I want to teach this horse to get that hindquarters off that bit. Okay. Okay. So as I was saying, this gal said, you know, she rode this horse all summer. She takes him back to the owner, and for the first time since she started him, he actually bucks. That kind of stuff happens. You know, we can't predict what a horse 
is they have a, they're an animal with a mind of their own. They make mistakes. They do things wrong. So no matter how good this horse is, if he's acting a little bit skittish, he's not lying to you. He's telling you, I have an issue. Deal with it. Okay? So you want it right there. Good. You want to deal with that issue. Good. Now just go ahead and Release pet on it. her. Now kind of while you're over there, yeah. kind of hold up on the rein a little shorter. Don't pull on it. Just get a hold of it there. And I'll kind of bang and pop that saddle. There you go. Good. Now come around to this side. Disengage the hindquarters on this side. Sock her out a little bit. What are we doing? It's, it's cold starting, right? Yeah. It's cold starting for sure. That's exactly what it is. We're going back to this horse's foundation and we're reminding it of lessons it already knew. Good job. Good job. Disengage its hindquarters on this side one time. Okay. Okay, now just move those hindquarters over. Get that nose bent around here. There you go. Good. Push those hindquarters on around even further. There you go. Right there. Bring her all the way around. Good. Now just pet on her and love on her and reward her. Good job. Just love on her. <clears throat> Fantastic. That's good. Those are the first two things you've got to be able to have. You've got to be able to get this horse's nose soft. You've got to be able to disengage those hindquarters. If you have a plan and a purpose to do what you're going to do, then you're going to come out all right. Okay, so you've got her soft. You've disengaged her hindquarters. You've sacked her out a little bit. In my book, I'm like, yeah, let's get on. But I'm not reading your book, okay? You never second guess yourself. I don't care who's standing there or what they're saying. If your gut is saying no, 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 then you do more groundwork until your gut says yes. And if your husband is standing there looking at you saying, well, there's TV cameras going, we got to roll, and your gut's going no, 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 then you say no, no, no. You don't do it, okay? Because safety is first and foremost your responsibility. And this is never life and death. You have all the time in the world to build the confidence that you and this horse need together. All right? Okay. So the next step that I would have you do would be to shorten the rein on one side and just start stepping up and down in the stirrup. Okay. Okay? If you feel comfortable doing it. Or I can go get someone else. Yeah, yeah, sure. You could call for somebody else. You'll call one of the kids in here. No, that's not acceptable. Okay. This is, this is, you got to do this. See, you see the, the real, the fundamental thing that I'm trying to do here is win an argument. That's what I'm really trying to do is prove that actually with enough knowledge. So go straight up. Yep. Yeah, good. And then just reach forward. Now what I do is I always keep one hand on the horn. There you go. And reach across and rub on them. It's a lot more secure if I have to jump ship. Well, why would I jump ship? Go ahead and step down. Now that's something right there. I probably, before I jumped down, I would have put my weight over the saddle horn and slid my toe out of that stirrup just a little bit so that I didn't have to pry it off when I get down, okay? Why would I jump ship? Because life is too short to play the hero on something that doesn't matter. So if this horse is gonna spook or have an issue, then what I wanna do is get down and fix that issue, okay? All right, let's come around to the other side. I think probably my problem is, is that I know this filly isn't nervous at all, but my nerves are going to make her nervous. Lie to yourself. Get confident. Just start saying, I can do this. To go straight up? Yep, just straight up. Isn't that kind of cool? It's like a disappearing act. <laughs> One minute she's not in the picture, the next minute she is. All right, uh -huh. now reach up there and pet on her. Good. Slide this toe back out of the stirrup a little bit. There you go. Reach back, rub over her tail. Oh. Just rub back there. Kind of rub on her anywhere you want to. There you go. Just let her get over it. Now, if you watch this horse's head, she's got her head up and she's kind of like, hey, what is this whole deal? What's going on here? Well, first of all, we're shining lights in her eyes. Dee Dee is, as she's already commented, a little bit nervous. So the horse just isn't real clear. She's not spooked. She's not scared. She's just, she's alert. She's looking around here. You want to be aware of that. Go ahead and step down and go to the other side. How many times is too many times to step up and down on both sides for this rider who's a little bit nervous? You can't do it too many times. The more you do it, the better. The more you put effort into going up and down on the saddle, the better it's gonna be, okay? Just ride, just pet all over her. 
I reach down on the other side. Don't lean over too far. Boy, that's something I'm really careful of. I never lay over my saddle. Never. Okay, right there. Now. Now what? Good. That's great. Now what? Follow your gut. Okay? Don't move. You, no, no, no. Uh, no. Don't follow your gut that way. If your gut says get down, get down. If your gut says I think it's going to be okay, you can stay the course, then stay the course. That's okay. But follow your gut. Don't second guess yourself ever. I can tell you that every time I've ever been in an accident with a horse, I have always first had this thing in my head that said this probably isn't a good idea. If you're in a training situation and things happen, there's almost every time there's been a little warning bell that went off in the back of your head that said, bad idea, Ken, don't do that. Listen to that. Teach yourself to listen to that. That's your subconscious conscience. It's probably your guardian angel saying, get out of this scenario. This isn't good. Okay. Good. Good. All right. Now, here's what I say. If you're an inexperienced rider and you've got a young horse to ride, I would tell you to do this exercise that Didi is doing right here until you are so relaxed that you absolutely don't care because you know this horse is just as calm and relaxed as it could be. Okay? Dee, how are we feeling? <laughs> do we got another month? <laughs> do we have another month? Yeah, you bet we do. I'm just kidding. Um, actually, she has really relaxed me and... Isn't that backwards? She has really relaxed me? <laughs> That's good. She has relaxed me. Your nerves me. have settled down. Why, why have your nerves settled down? Because, and this is why this stuff is important, you, Dee Dee has put herself up and down in the saddle. She's fooled with the horse. She's actually gained confidence realizing, gee, this horse isn't waiting to get me. This horse isn't out to get me or to get me hurt. Okay? Now, Dee Dee, if you were in the saddle and this horse does something wrong, what are you going to do? Just ride her. Just ride her. How? Well, if she, um, it depends on what she does. If she is just walking or trotting or loping, then I'll probably just let her go for a little ways and then I'll stop her by picking up on one rein. Okay. That would be my instinctive reaction. That would be the good reaction. But you want to have a plan. If this horse just kind of spooks, don't reach down and rip her head off. Give her a couple of steps, then pick up on her. If she blows up and starts bucking, the quicker you get a hold of that rein, the better. But she's not going to blow up and start bucking. Okay, and she's not going to spook and run off. But if you don't have a plan in your head before you get on this horse's back, you aren't going to suddenly develop one when you need it. You get a plan that says, this is what's going to happen. If this happens, this is what I'm going to do. And now you, you start developing a muscle memory just in thought. You think it through. I can honestly tell you, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm a very, very right-handed person. If I climb on this horse right now, I sort of morph into a very left-handed person. And so I can tell you if a horse spooks, jumps, does anything, I'm gonna pick up on my left rein. Why do I know that? Because I practice it going down the road. I practice it in the airplane. I practice it sitting in the living room on the couch. I think about what will I do in this scenario? And I plan for it so that when the scenario happens, my brain knows how to take over. Because you're not gonna have the presence of mind to think it through. Right. Okay, you ready? think so. Ooh, bad answer. Up and down a few more times. Never. I think so is never a yes. Never. Okay, okay. No, no. I was actually, I said bad answer, but good answer. Bad in that, no, you're not going to get up on this horse on an I think so. That's not happening. Because if I think so means eh, there's a 50-50 chance I should be okay. That isn't going to cut it. You, you need the whole deal. Okay. We're ready to go move cows. Oh yeah, open the gates, let her out. All right, what do you think? I've heard you say okay three times, what does that mean? Yeah, I am ready to ride her. I think she's ready. I think that I'm ready. I think I have a good reaction and thought process and plan. Um, Great. Go for it. I want you to step up on her, settle down in your seat, keep a short rein on one side, settle down in your seat, get your stirrup on the other side, but don't bend over to get it. 
and stay up there and just ride her. Just stay up there. Don't treat her like a colt. No, nope. she's just, already had. You just, you can step back off the second you feel like you should. You don't need to stay up there forever. You just step up, but you're not looking for a world's fastest ride either. It's amazing how this does um, build your confidence. Stepping up, stepping down. Should I make her give to the sure, bit just, at all? Yep, just pick up on a rein, direct her a little bit. You know, she's got a total of 16 rides, maybe, up until right now. Pick up on her rein, bring her back over here into the center of the pen. Don't use my legs or use my no, legs? No, I don't use your legs too much right now. Okay, now just pick up on your left rein and just kind of bring her to a stop right there. Here's a really key element I want you to work on. Okay. Rock that saddle and step off of her. The other side or the same side? Either side. And if you want to see how Dee Dee and Ebony end up in this training session, you better tune in right here next week on Discovering the Horseman Within. Okay, so Dee, what did you think of that session, the first half of this session? How did you think it went? You gave me a great understanding and explanation, helping me with my confidence and just having a good, solid foundation to start with on her. Were you scared? Yeah. The whole time or did you get over it a little bit? Oh, I got over it. I was scared when we started and then um, feel very comfortable when we end it. Well, good. That's the way it's supposed to be. I wonder if I've won the argument. We won't know till next week, will we? Thank you so much for joining us. We do appreciate you being with us every week. And until next time, may God bless the trails you ride. For more information about Ken McNabb Clinic's appearances and products, visit KenMcNabb.com. One true horse, a perfect partner built to ride. One true horse, a bond that cannot be denied. You would search forever just to have the chance to take a ride on one true horse. Gonna take a ride on one trip